soul of the today education so let us nourish them and let us see that they flourish more so thank you for uh, attending and i welcome lakshman sir so i now request uh, our librarian malesham sir to give a brief introduction about uh, lakshman sir so uh, i think uh, uh, malesham sir are you ready with the introduction yes madam yes ma yeah sure sure good afternoon good afternoon madam good afternoon to the participants and key speakers dr professor lakshman rao sir professor lakshman rao sir served as the professor at department of library and information science usmania university more than 32 years and board of studies chairman of department of library and information science usmania university and he served as director ucc academic staff college usmania university he is associated with many professional associations general secretary ir ilts and general secretary indian library association he received best picture award from government of andhra pradesh and also awarded parvathneni gangadhar rao memorial award from the gout of andhra pradesh he is also advisor for the national library kolkata He is UGC Emeritus Fellow. Now he is serving as President, Telangana Library Association, Hyderabad, Telangana State, and he is associated with many universities in India, and also he is associated with many recruitment agencies and selection boards. This is the brief introduction about the professor. Dr. Lakshman Rao, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, so now I invite Lakshman Rao, sir. Uh, sir, I actually wanted to offer uh, homage to one of the library associate uh, members. So I think uh, Lakshman Rao, sir, will explain, and we will maintain one minute of silence, and after that, the session will proceed. Thank you, one and all. Uh, Mr. Ashok Babu is a senior scientist in different laboratories, DLRL. And uh, after his retirement, he was sick, and the day before yesterday, he expired. He is one of the senior most professionals in the country. He was associated with a number of organizations, and he is also friend to everybody. Unfortunately, that we lost him, and uh, we all joined together, uh, association members, professionals. And everybody joined together to convey our uh, condolences to the bereaved family. I request everybody to be silent for a minute, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, first, let so, me. So, uh, 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 one sec. Uh, uh, please tell us something about your library association and uh, your services you are rendering and everything, uh, because most of us uh, don't know about uh, the most of the services your library association is giving, sir. Uh, so, please share your views about the library associations and how teachers can make use of your libraries to promote the research in higher education. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Telangana Library Association was formed in the year 2014 after uh, the new state of Telangana was formed. And we started this association on the day of Librarians Day, which is celebrated all over the country on August 9th of 2014. And what we do, we conduct so many academic programs like webinars. Earlier, we used to conduct seminars. I think in the last seven years, uh, uh, 
we have conducted about 50 programs and we also uh, did a book, book presentation to some of the libraries as a gift so that these private libraries can provide better service we also represent to the government the issues related to the library professionals for example in the public libraries one librarian is managing four or five libraries which are located at different places which is not possible we also last time when uh, there was a recruitment by telangana gurukul schools we conducted a free coaching for the members uh, for the for the candidates who are appearing for the interviews so that is how we mostly we do professional activity represent the issues and problems related to the professionals to the government and other agencies we also write to the universities and institutions representing the issues of the librarians and not only our libraries but our libraries but also at every uh, other state also and uh, now as on today telangana library association is uh, uh, known as the most active association in the country as far as the state is concerned uh, and now recently we have decided that uh, about 18 rural libraries which are managed by the rural youth we are presenting 5000 rupees worth of uh, books because the uh, government of telangana has uh, uh, announced 18000 jobs so to support the youth uh, managed libraries we are going to give 5000 worth of books plus some of other books which are which we got from other agencies and uh, our programs continue to be there once the corona, corona came we started organizing these programs so in the on, online and uh, our members are associated with a number of organizations and also number of activities professional activities not only in telangana but all over the country this is what is the background of telangana and uh, right now for example this year uh, by may i think we have conducted about we are associated with seven or eight programs uh, already um, almost average of one, one, one in 20 days to a month and we continue to work uh, work uh, on several professional activities uh, right not only now but in future too that is what is the telangana library association now let me come to the point now madam vijayalakshmi garu uh, Professor Sudarshan Rao, who is going to be another resource person. Uh, Dr. Sriram, who is a senior most, uh, one of the senior professionals in the country, university librarian of Sikkim University. Uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar Chegoni, who is the secretary of this uh, association. Uh, teachers of the uh, Mayabad College, and also uh, professional friends who, are, who have joined this uh, webinar. Now, let me also say, Professor Vijay Lakshmi Garu asked us. When, when uh, Madam Luija Lakshmi Garu asked uh, to associate uh, with the Mahabad College, uh, we, were, we were very happy. And second thing is, I belong to Mahabad district, Dornakal. So I feel more, much more happy to associate uh, this program with the Mahabad Government Degree College. Now, coming to the library, first question is, what is, what is quality education? Now, I just want to give one example, then we will give you some of them. For example, when 300 odd engineering colleges are there in the in the state of Andhra Pradesh, and then also in our, all over the country, we found only 23.5% of the people who graduated from engineering colleges were having the competence to work as an engineer. Now, what does it mean? It means they have the degree, but they, they are not having skills. This is the this itself indicates the quality of education that we are providing to engineering graduates. Similarly, I don't like to support one or other university or one or other colleges, but there are colleges which are suffering for want of teachers, suffering for want of the resources, and but still the teachers try to do as best as possible, but still some of the colleges, they are not in a position to provide the quality education. The moment you say quality education, quality education is one of the 17 uh, items in the uh, sustainable development goals of uh, the UN. And one of them is the uh, quality education. The moment you say quality education, what is quality education? First of all, it is a uh, quality teacher and quality teaching. The moment you say quality teacher and teaching, first the teacher has to learn, then he has to teach. For learning, he needs the knowledge, he needs the resources, he needs the content, he needs the information, a lot of things. Then he will be able to learn and he will be able to teach. And this is a lifelong learning process. And 
the after lifelong process he will be updating every time and then he will be able to teach but in addition to the teacher and teaching other things are also there one of them is updating the skills the moment you say skills it is a basically like an example a science teacher has to you know how to you operate a microscope how do you operate a, a, an equipment all all such things are also skills and now what we are able to see newer and newer equipment is coming up and unfortunately we have no facilities to see them and we have no facilities to experience with them and that is why what what we say is infrastructure is also one of the important uh, item that we that contributes for the quality of education then at the same time we also need uh, uh, most important thing is uh, resources what are these resources of course teachers are also resources but resources when we say most important is knowledge resources knowledge resources are you call information resources you call books you call them as a journals you call them anything but all of them are essential and in addition to the books also there is also other materials right for example today we are talking about uh, digital board we are talking about uh, internet all these uh, uh, facilities are also required if you want to really provide the uh, what we call quality education so as a matter of fact we are not i'm not going to touch anything except the knowledge resources when i say knowledge resources it includes variety of things now when you talk about the knowledge resources as i was repeat i was earlier i was talking about learning and teaching every teacher has to be updated and this updating is a big process and when you want to update first and foremost is you need the knowledge resources knowledge resources generally what we believe what what we believe is in most of the cases in the schools and the degree colleges we believe in the degree uh, in the textbooks but unfortunately we are able to see the same textbooks for last 20 years 30 years are being used in spite of the fact that the knowledge is growing knowledge is being updated this is one of the most important resource but actually we, in any you take any college any institution we depend on only one or textbook two textbooks even though the library may be having many more books on particular subject and there is a need for the teachers to go through the several books and these books will help us in understanding the latest knowledge and the, now what is happening most of us we depend on google what is this google everybody says google is there though we don't need the library but unfortunately it is not true Google gives you lots of info. For example, if you search on what item, it gives you 10, 10 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 12 lakhs, for 9 lakhs. And out of 9 lakhs, which is relevant, which is not relevant. If you start looking into 1 million uh, documents, your life is over, but you will not be able to understand which, is, which document is, which uh, article or which book is relevant to your subject. Whereas a librarian, on the basis of your requirement, he will be able to identify the appropriate resource and will be able to give to the user. This is the advantage of a Google and the library and librarian. And when you talk about the, uh, the resources, there n number of things are there. And now, for example, when we talk about the manuscripts, manuscripts are there from centuries old. So today we are talking about the distance of the sun, earth, earth circumference, all these things we say it are Indian, Indian contribution. But similar things are there in our manuscripts. Unfortunately, these are what you call translated and the knowledge is being underutilized or not utilized. We have a national manuscript mission where about uh, 5 million uh, uh, manuscripts are collected with them and they are available with the uh, national manuscript mission in Delhi. But of course, if you want to consult them, you have to depend, take some certain permission from the concerned institution. It, it is uh, estimated that more than 5 million um, manuscripts are listed uh, and uh, they are not available with anyone and about uh, another 5 million uh, manuscripts are there with the individuals all over the country so this is one of the most important uh, resource for if you if you are looking for the late, late old information which is valuable we can look for the manuscripts but when we come to the present area we started with the paper and now today from paper we have gone to electronic resources or digital resources and when we talk about these two things today, every library wants to have both what, what we call hybrid library. When you talk about the physical resources, that is the way you can sit anywhere, you can use them, read them, and get them. But in the context of the ever increasing the ever increasing number of resources, ever increasing number of documents, 
the things are changed and everybody wants to use the technology in the context of technology we will be able to make use of the electronic or digital resources we call easily everybody knows e resources when you want to use e resources you need a tool like a computer mobile or laptop something to read you can't read anything uh, like a newspaper or like a paper uh, document so that is the basic uh, development because of the uh, technology then when we talk about the books let me because i need i know i have to complete within the limited time when you talk about the books the books can be three types of books can be possible one is you purchase the books which we are buying individually or library or in the college library or a public library anywhere and you select the books on the basis of looking into the content and the and the author name or whatever it is and then you buy it this is one of the most popular uh way of getting the books and the second is free free means there are two three types are there one is a copyright copyright means if you write a book the copyright comes to the author and the copyright lies with the, the author after the death of author for 60 years so if, for example if author dies in the 2022 up to 2082 the document will have a copyright of the, the copyright for the individual or his children or his family so therefore you cannot copy but for education purpose a limited uh, amount of information can be copied it can be even distributed in the classroom also so this is a, once it is out of copyright you are able to get uh, uh, you can use them you can copy them whatever you want you can do this and even in electronic resources so there what we say copyright but there it, they use a different uh, uh, terminology cc right Uh, so that is what they use and everywhere a author or a ipr has a right to keep the knowledge with him and if you want he can share he can sell he can he can uh, distribute whatever he wants he, he can do now the third one is open access resources what we call the when the prices are increasing the concept has been developed what is this open access resources that is before you publish you say this is open to all of course there are certain conditions are there where you can use this but really in some cases where you need to take permission and if you want to modify it if there is in cases some of the cases you can modify by yourself and this type of resources are common so when you look into the uh, technology there are lots of come uh, our website websites have come for example if you look into the pdfdrive.com you will be able to get 78 million documents or books at free of cost and they include the latest also so if you if you are thinking that your library doesn't have the books uh, you you can go for searching for this because the teacher has to be updated the reason is uh, if the student is uh, coming with some query and if the teacher doesn't on he is he he his image goes to docs so therefore the one of the i am just giving a free resource like a pdf drive Uh, which gives you about 78 to 79 million documents that is 7.9 crores of books at free of cost similarly there are other websites like uh, internet archives which is in millions and also hathi trust for example out of which in hathi trust there are 37% of the books are freely accessible remaining you have to pay for using them similarly i am sure one of you must be knowing that the national digital library of india which is managed by karakpur iit Uh, which has about 30 million uh, maybe now every day it adds millions because it doesn't purchase anything it links to the databases which are available in other universities ndli recently in, in corona period they identified books which are for school which are for colleges and which are for different groups they identified and they put it separately for, so that the student can go to that particular uh, group and then use the resources and this is another 30000 plus Uh, sorry, thirty lakhs plus. Uh, and then similarly, you for example, we NCERT. These books are freely accessible, and uh, I would like to also add up open access, uh, open education resources that my my colleague, my friend, uh, Professor Sudarshan Rao will be talking on that. The the open education resources includes. uh for example 
the material that are being created by open uh, universities or open schools. So these are the lot of books and we are able to see. And the majority is we are worried because a library will have only limited. And you say, how do I get updated? But other resources, in the tech, thanks to technology, these resources can be freely accessed. And in addition to that, you also can purchase because everything is not free. Some of them are purchasable and you have to purchase those books and you can use uh, freely on the net, through the net or on your mobile, on your flat, uh, computer or on, on your uh, laptop. This is uh, one area where we are talking about books. Second, when we talk about the journals, again, the book journals are also again two types. One is a paper or physical and second is a e-journals, e-journal, which is also again the soft copy. We know, we all know, we are not in a position to purchase the physical journals because of ex expensiveness. The, the journals are very expensive. And day after the uh, year after the year, 6 to 10 percent of their cost is increasing. This is one major problem for journals. But still, the difference between book is uh, only it gives you information maybe two years old, one year old articles are going to be most updated information. The only thing is a book gives uh, uh, a comprehensively on particular subject um, or major meta subject what we call. But as far as the journals are concerned, it gives you on a small micro subject information on a micro subject, a specific uh, area of the subject. And uh, this is one physical. And second is, as I said, e-journals, they are also available. Now, when, let me talk about uh, uh, physical journals, everybody knows. E-journals, when e-journals came, there are also different uh, types of problems are associated. M please remember that when you want to use the technology, internet is the most important thing that we have to, uh, we need to have. And when you talk about the e-journals, I would like to suggest for the colleges, the end list is uh, given by Inflipnet, which gives you around five, four to five lakhs of books and also about seven to 8,000 of uh, journals. And it doesn't cost more than 6,000 or 7,000 for the uh, colleges which are under, I'm sure, uh, 12B, uh, I think under 12B, which are coming under UGC, uh, and even including the government colleges, you have to pay six or 7,000 per, uh, per year, and you'll be able to get access to six to seven lakhs of uh, books. I think recently they have increased also and also about seven to 8,000 journals. So this is one of the most popular resource for the colleges because it gives you a lot of uh, useful. Coming to another uh, uh, journals, what we uh, for example, there is one uh, every library knows, uh, <coughs> directory of uh, open access journals. You find about 20,000 journals on different subjects. You can go open there, whatever the journals you are looking for. They are also not only English, but in other subjects also. Whatever you want, you can choose. And you identify the URL, and you can use for any time you like. And now the latest development is open access resources, open access journals. That is, at the time of publication only, they allow you to access these journal articles. There are number, and these numbers are increasing. When you want to publish an open access journal, you have to pay money to the publisher, because they they take the money and they make it free of cost to access these journal articles. Now the numbers are increasing. Now there are n number of other resources out there which can give you all sorts of articles published under open access. For example, directory of open access journals gives also articles which are published uh, under the open access. So this is another free resource, the articles which are available. Now I would, at this time, I would like to quote two things. One is the content pages are also available, but most important is Sci-Hub. Sci-Hub gives you latest articles. It is a pirated website and it gives you latest articles. If you want, you can subscribe, not subscribe, sorry, you can access, you can search and you can use the article. Uh, this is a, most recently in government uh, against the uh, Sci-Hub, somebody has gone to high court and uh, it is still running. But poor countries, we cannot pay. For example, if you want to access any article uh, by paying, it, it, it may cost you anywhere 10,000 rupees. And if you want to publish in open access journals, it may cost any, anywhere $500 to $10,000, depending upon the type of journal and depending upon its background. So therefore, 
we are, we are able to see four types one is physical where you pay second is a uh, um, and the third is the content pages and the fourth is open access and the uh, fifth is a uh, uh, free journals which are freely access not only open access but free journals are also there so this is how when we know these resources are there they will be able, they'll be able to help the uh, scientist teacher researcher to get the latest information then another important thing is now online programs now ugc has given permission for 40 percent of uh, online programs for under the blended uh, uh, teaching style so in this case, when you talk about online program, there are number of resources are there. For, for example, I am sure all of you must be knowing Swayam. Swayam facilitates to everybody to join. The teachers can plan for a program and submit. And these Swayam programs are there from for school, for intermediate, for degree, and for post graduation. You can join, and uh, you will be able to get the certificate. And also, your credits can be transferred in your regular program. That is the advantage of Swayam. This is the government. Uh, and in this, there are a lot of organizations are associated with Swayam, including the IITs. And then you are able to see YouTube. A lot of things are available on, through YouTube. You can search. And then also uh, something like EPG Patshala, which is uh, of uh, Inflimnet. It can give you about 76, 77 subjects, lessons. And then you can also see MIT courseware. This also gives you about 2,500 subjects. Free courses, free courses in the sense it is uh, where you can see and you can learn, you can download. So that is uh, where you can find. And also recently, I'm sure Madam has sent some of the um, uh, recommended uh, students for joining into Commonwealth of Learning, which is uh, giving a free facility to learn uh, Google programs and also other programs also. So this is uh, one area where you are able to have a facility for online program. There are also example like uh, uh, Allison, right? There are lots of things are there, but they again, they come freely. Some of them you have to pay, but whatever till now I said, all of them are free. Then coming to another important area is, today we are talking about the uh, uh, education, sorry, examinations, etc. And you are able to find through the internet there are a few websites are there where it can give you latest information, including there are a couple of websites are there which helps you to identify the information that is useful for the competitive exams. And uh, that is the librarian has to do a lot of uh, activity and uh, service to uh, uh, make uh, uh, the program uh, uh, to provide the uh, to provide access to the, a lot of uh, new information. Now here, uh, I would like to tell you one of the most important things. Earlier, we were talking about a reprint. That is, if you publish, a, if you publish a, an article, they were giving 10 copies and which you can distribute. Today, what is happening to publish in a journal also, it may take three months, six months, one year. Even they accept also, it may take six months to one year. So what happens if somebody may copy this or somebody may do the same research and publish? then your research is uh, not recognized because you will, they will say you are you have copied it. So therefore, in this context, uh, what has happened in preprints have come. What is this preprint? You Whatever you write an article, you put into the preprint at free of cost. And uh, you can also make a, a, a sort of a, uh, what you call, uh, Sorry, I was getting telephone. That's why I disturbed. Sorry. Uh, when you when you talk about the uh, reprint, you do that. But a preprint is before you publish in a journal, you will be able to put into the preprints, which can be seen by everybody and anybody at free of cost. That means if you look into the preprint on different subjects, you will be able to get lots of things uh, which are not published, but already the research is being done. And once the article is published in a journal, it comes under copyright. But in preprint, it doesn't come under copyright. It has this, our psychology and a lot of mathematics, etc. Those who are working on a particular uh, in a particular subject, they can look for a specific URL. If anybody wants, we can we can help. I mean, all my colleagues are here and they, they can they can uh, uh, help you. And they can they can help you to give such sources also. Now coming to the next step, let me because of limitation of time, let me come to the research. What is research? 
finding a solution for the problem. You can say search and search, it becomes research. This is basically what we talk about. And the research latest uh, um, updates are necessary if you want to really teach and if you want to do research. Now, in this context, librarians play a key role. First of all, the first and foremost activity that done by every researcher is the literature survey. Now, what is a literature survey? Literature survey search the existing literature and identify the gaps. And these gaps are going to give you a, a, a sort of idea about the problems. Uh, those problems are the gaps you have to fill up and take that as a problem and do the research. This is the basic purpose of literature survey. And when you want to literature survey, what are the different types of resources you have to search for identification of the gaps? It could be books, it could be journals, it could be no, reports, whatever, whatever it is, you, the library will be able to help you in identifying the gaps first thing. Second thing, literature survey also helps you to understand what are the different equipment that are being used by earlier people, what are the procedures that are being used by earlier people, what are the inputs that have been used, what are the what is the equipment they have used? All these things will give you an idea what you are going to do, what you have to do. This is one area, and that's of course at the same time we will also be able to understand the through the literature survey the objectives and create formation of the objectives and hypothesis also will help us. Then another important area is the librarian can help you in a, a preparation of the content. That is the content when I'm talking about content, when you write the thesis, you need the latest updated information. Now, uh, take an example. If you are somebody is doing a research on a particular topic, the librarian can help you the what is the status of this research? Who is doing research in this in this area or related area? In which institutions this type of research is research related to the subject is happening? Who which a scientist is doing research related to this topic? Right. So all such a type of the information can be given. So what happens with that, you will be able to get connected with other universities, other institutions anywhere in the world. And then you can contact, you can get in touch and then you will be able to do it. Then this is one area and specialized also the journals where you will be able to get specialized uh, relate specialized journals related to uh, this particular topic is also possible. So this is this is how what happens at every point of time. If you are if anybody is doing research, the scientist or the researcher will be able to get the support from the librarian. And one of the most, in addition to this, there are also other things that librarian can help. For example, plagiarism, right? He can tell you what are the guidance, what is UGC guidance. And also he'll be able to tell you how do we overcome the plagiarism and what is the difference. For example, I would like to simply give it, if you are copying from somewhere, if you put quotations, that is you have taken from so and so, it is a research. If you don't put the quotation, it becomes plagiarism and you are not supposed to copy from anywhere. Then second one is the uh, writing the citation. The, there are a number of standards are there like IPA, MLA, right? There are standards are there. Librarian can help you. How do you write the citation and using the standard? Now today, there are also softwares have come, for example, Mendeley. It can help you to write the citation. Just you identify the citation and then uh, identify the which software you want to use, which which standard you want to use, automatically it gets converted and you will be able to see the citation as per the standard. And then also you will, you will be able to uh, get uh, other other type of support from, from time to time whenever it is coming. As I said, preprints also help in knowing what is the latest research or latest activity that is happening in a particular subject. So this is how what is happening. The type of documents are plenty, right? For example, standards, specifications, and then patents. All these things are very important documents uh, in doing a research because only the scientists, when they identify something, they patent it. It may be a medicine, it may be a procedure, it may be an equipment. And these patents also help you to identify the equipment and improve the equipment. So it depends upon what type of problem you are taking, what type of research you are doing. And at every point of time, the base, the background, the the whatever the knowledge you, you, you want, you are looking for, for the further research is can be helpful, can be uh, given you or can the librarian can guide you. Uh, and that will help you to improve as a the one of the best teacher, one of the best teaching process, one of the best quality quality education, one of the uh, way of uh, improving the research activity. Research improving in the sense 
quality research plus also fast fast in the research so that is how the library plays a key role i i just remember one of our former uh, president of india shankar dayal sharma said uh, library without library a university cannot run but a library can run without university right library the university cannot run without the library but library can run without the university so therefore today everybody says library is not necessary in the context of internet of course you may not find the books but the background work identification selection process all these things which is relevant which is not relevant all these things are possible to be done by only library professionals a teacher who is doing research who is doing working uh, for the best best uh, teaching ex experience uh, he will not his, his area of identification of the information knowledge resources it is not his area so naturally he will not be able to justice only he has to depend on the library but fortunately or unfortunately we have librarians and they are not in a position to uh, show what they can do and the reasons are two reasons one is most of the uh, faculty or most of the students most of the research they don't they depend on only limited number of resources which they have unless they ask the librarian will not be able to move forward and give you all sorts of services so therefore uh the library a minus library the education or the teaching research they cannot go go ahead and especially the quality is most difficult minus the library resources or knowledge resources this is what i just wanted to say thank you very much madam for giving me an opportunity i think i i uh, finished in right time i thought thank you very much if you have any questions uh, and now my colleague professor sudarshan rao will speak on um open education resources thank you uh, thank you so much sir for your wonderful session and i now request uh, our vice principal yugendar sir to please give a brief description about uh, sudarshan sir yugendar sir are you ready Uh, Yugendar sir, you are. Yugendar sir, open your mic. Mic, mic, uh, mic, 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 mic. Yugendar sir, please. Uh, open uh, okay. Mic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Okay, okay, madam. Okay. Okay, okay. So that, so brief studies of a. So that's why now, sir, professor, retired coordinator, and also head of the department of library information science. So as a very excellent professional studies, also called a consultant national council of a rural institution (MHRD), also called a college in May 2017, December 2017, also UGC Emirate and Emirates fellowships 2014 to 2015, 11th to March 2015 to 10th to March 2017, also research topic is a open access resource. in university library in, in india a study of their access uses and management so also icssr senior fellow march 11th 2013 march 10th to 2015 research topic is knowledge management in academic library in, in india a study of a tools and a techniques used in a information creations storage in exchanges also uh, head department of the library information and science usmana university for 3 years also uh, 3 terms 2001 to 3 2007 to 9 and 2011 to 12 also uh, got a chairman board of the studies library and information science usmana university for 3 terms 1919 to 2001 2003 to 2005 2009 to 2011 also uh, 25 research teaching experience in at usman university department of library and information science and technology and 8 uh, years of experience in librarian and 29 years of the research experience also uh, got a principal university college of arts and science usman university hyderabad 2018 to 9 8 to 2010 so the dean 
and the dean faculty of arts and uh, in charge dean faculty of social science usmane university during the and yes tenure of the is also principal ship university college of uh, arts science science uh, also got usmane university for their leave period of the dean 2008 to 10 also vice principal university college of arts and science usmana university hyderabad for 6 months 2007 to 8 additional controller of examination coordinator and a professional usmana university hyderabad and two years so he was a published in 82 papers in national and international journals and also conference proceedings monographs and see supervised 10 phds and 14 mphil degrees also hanover awards he was a great three hanover awards also got in the so pratibhavani gangadhar rao medal nar memorial best library in our information science and professional awards 2009 award in institutions by the ps telu university or hyderabad received on 4th october 2010 also second excellent award iatlic motivative library and the information says best teacher award 2010 award received at the university of pune during the indian association of teacher of libraries and information science so iatlis national conference held in it 17th november 2010 also excellent research or excellent teaching experience and also received the andhra pradesh state government so material teacher award 2012 so as a state best teacher award so as a was excellent information or excellent teaching and so research fellows sir welcome to this conference and you will give the best suggestions of the our topic thank you madam uh, thank you yogender sir that was a very very Uh, okay. great introduction about uh, sudarshan rao sir uh, we welcome sudarshan rao sir once again and uh, i i thank both the sirs for my bottom of my heart because uh, in a very short period you people have accepted and you are you came down for this webinar so over to sudarshan rao sir uh, good afternoon to all our uh, friends in the webinar especially my sincere thanks to the organizers dr vijay lakshmi ji the principal of uh, the my board uh, government degree college and all her uh, colleagues faculty members and also the students of the college especially i place on record the other services of other colleagues also and um, my teacher and uh, colleague uh, professor lakshman rao ji dr ravi kumar one of our senior most uh, professionals dr sridam uh, dr yugender ji from your own institution the faculty member of uh, the mahabal college and then uh, the librarian of your institution your college mr malnesham i think another friend mr manoj kumar sahu and uh, many others uh, professional colleagues faculty members students uh, ladies and gentlemen indeed it's a it's a it's a pleasure and honor for me to associate with uh, the mahabal government degree college uh, webinar on the theme called library as a source of information yes i think that could be one of the important areas i think we have to always uh, try to uh, demonstrate how best all the academics uh, when i say academics means both the faculty members and the students of course there could be also the research scholars how we will be able to make use of uh, this knowledge store knowledge storehouse so knowledge resource that is a library how best we should be able to really make use of is really a, a a a very important area for all the academics and researchers including the faculty members and um, this is uh, the theme of the you know the uh, webinar or the conference what you have identified certainly is going to be a 
a very vast area and um, of course i am just you know asked to talk um, something about uh, open educational resources what we really call them as oers i wish i really try to also take support of some of my ppts which i will be really sharing to you uh, kindly give a minute minute of your time for me i just wanted to share my own ppts from here uh, Um, I don't know why. Stop presenting. I have to make a presentation. Present here. I go to my entire screen. Here I just want to make a presentation of uh, this particular file. Avoid infinity. Me share your entire screen. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I think I should come for a video. Yes, not for the entire screen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pradi ra. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hmm. 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 Exit full screen. Exit full screen. What happened? First, uh, first you uh, open the PPT in uh, desktop. Sir. The PPT is already open. It's already there. It is. It is already there. It's open. It's open. Okay. PPT is open now. Is can anybody see that my slide now? No. Uh -huh. Friends, kindly just respond to me. Yeah. Uh, we, we are not able to see, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Just to know because there is some inconvenience here. I don't know what it is like. Uh, uh, present a window, probably this will help me, not full screen. Uh, hello. Yeah. One second. Yeah. It's coming. Uh, I think it, it, it. Why it's not happening? Why is. Uh, I don't know. It is already my 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 PPT. My PPT is already open. Kept it here like that. Maybe the bandwidth is low, sir. Not that. I think they. What they say is, uh, when I really uh, this is here. When I go to a window, and then uh, from the window when I am sharing it. Uh, share i think it should come yeah we are able to see but it is not opening sir i don't know to, uh, to our are sharing there, uh, actually, infinity, there are many things we uh, don't share your entire screen or window share just a tab or different window instead okay 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 share the screen mm -hmm. <clears throat> one second yeah Please, please allow me a minute. I think I will uh, try to just mm -hmm. one second. Please allow me just one second. Ravi Kumar. Uh, at least send it to Ravi Kumar or send it to me, sir. Uh, so that think, we will no, share you, it from uh, here. Sir. Madam, you are you are mail and ID? Uh, VVL principal at uh, gmail.com. VDL. VVL. Vanapalli Vijayalakshmi. 
principal at the rate gmail dot com. V P L principal. Yeah, sir. Manoj is opening, sir. Manoj Kumar, who is it? So you just open the uh, share the screen and then open the PPT. It will start running. What I mean once again? Share the screen and then open the PPT. It will start. Oh, that, that, that is what I am doing now. Anyway, no, sir, first you share the screen, sir. After that, you open your PPT. Then PPT, yes. Then you true, open true, your. True, 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 true. That's what I am doing. But anyway, I am just now sending to Ravi. Okay. Ravi Kumar coming. Ravi. Ravi will uh, probably open uh, from there. is uh, OERSSR, okay. Ravi, it is sent now to you. Hello. It is sent to you now. Just see if you can really open it. That will be all right. Sir, you select the your entire screen, sir. First. Yeah. Then, uh, then your dialog box or pop-up box will uh, appear. You select on the uh, select on that uh, box. Window. Then no, you actually, will, uh, uh, should I take a tab or uh, because I enter, enter, enter screen. screen. Enter screen. Enter. Entire screen when I opened it, uh, it's not permitting me. No, no sir. You will, uh, uh, you will appear a dialog box, sir. True. Uh, then you select that uh, box. Yeah. Uh. No, it's not coming again. Now it says infinity of mirrors are in this now. That's what exactly. Open, open PPT. Sir. Maybe uh, you are having some. Uh, PPT in full screen. Okay, and actually now what I really uh, see, feel is, okay, I think now it should really come probably. More than one window was open. That was a problem probably. It, now it looks like that. That was a problem. Anyway, one second, one second. It's presenting. Manoj, you stop it. Huh? Are you watching Dadi? Ravi Kumar Chego and the other. Ravi Kumar Gmail. Your, uh, your screen is now in share mode, sharing mode, sir. Pardon me, pardon me, sir. Your uh, uh, Yahoo mail is now we can see, sir. Your mail, uh, the screen. You see now? Ah, uh, now it is shown. You open okay. the PPT once. Oh, then it should come. Then it should come. You, uh, open OK. Okay, sir. Now it is. Uh, it has come out. Then only you will be able to okay. share. Okay, sir. Now oh, security alert, man. Manoj, you stop it. Okay. Is, is it okay now uh, coming up? Uh, okay, sir. Now it is okay. I think it's coming. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I think there is some inconvenience. I think uh, um, uh, many windows were open. I think many screen, multiple screens were there. Therefore, it was not allowing. Anyway, that's good. Thank you. I think we'll proceed now. Sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, whatever really happens, maybe uh, I'm very most on you. Okay. So now, friends. Um, this is an area I am asked to I am asked to discuss with you. That is the open educational resources. And um, to begin with, uh, the in the background, I think what's the, well, before we really move on to the open educational resources. Now, uh, to begin with, we have to understand 
that you know open educational resources is a subset of open access resources now what is this open access and what is this open access resources and what is this open educational resources and how these open access resources are really going to, or open access open educational resources are going to be useful to us how we should be able to really make use of them how to tap them how to really you know access them and um, how to make use of them i think these are all some of the issues uh, that we have to always be the academics we have to always try to really um, um, know these kind of uh, um, techniques or the traits or the you know the methods and means of uh, the, to begin with uh, the the very basic existence of the resources and then of course uh, then how these resources uh, we can really you know tap them and then how to really make use of them in order to make our uh, teaching learning and research activities are uh, you know in, in, uh, done in a better way in a better way like so now what is happening is i think uh, professor lakshman rao already gave a with his uh, wide and rich experiences he has really made a a cursory you know you know outlook about uh, uh, quite large number of issues uh, i think that will really also be a kind of um, you know what we can really say is uh, a background for uh, my particular presentation also it could be part of that as a matter of fact now he was mentioning about we the academics have to really look after look into the way how we can really improve the quality of our own teaching learning and research activities our own publications activities and then at the same time uh, the uh, in, in the context of our new education policy 2020 that's another thing then he said and i think we have um, abundant abundant that's what i really wanted to re-emphasize on that abundant uh, information resources are available to us in these days unlike in the past now we used to have an information crunch you know we have information scarcity used to be there we are all looking for information where it is available which library will be able to really give information where to go how to find information this was one of the biggest you know the challenges uh, for the academics in the past now i think uh, we have uh, overcome that problem the problem now today is uh, the problem of uh, getting our own information resources or information whatever we really need it uh, with a greater precision and accuracy with a greater precision and accuracy what exactly we want uh, we should be able to really retrieve or get it back uh, get to us uh, from a large or a huge mass of information that's what i really want to say we have abundant information resources are there both good bad i think the best i think you can really say many things you know the quality of information resources are there the substandard and the sub quality you know low quality information is also available and then we have to really always try to really identify what is really been authoritative authentic quality information from the huge mass of information and to make use of it because in order to have our own uh, you know the teaching research and publications activities are to be quality means this is a, this is a point that professor lakshmanda was also really making a, emphatically was making a mention about that when we really want to have a quality you know the kind of output the quality kind of you know the you know the you know what what you really say is uh, instructions quality content delivery i think what you really want so in all those things uh, we need to naturally identify that the sources which are really going to be the sources uh, authority to sources etc then we should be able to really make use of them that will really give us like then of course uh, other things also professor lakshman Ravji was really mentioning quite a lot many things now i will really go on to my what i said is so open educational resources is part of open access resources that's the first point now what is this open access resources why that open access resources are really come into picture is now in in in, in uh, till the recent past even now also quite a good number of libraries and librarians uh, and also the information seekers like you and me the academics uh, we were really been uh, looking for uh, the information whenever we really need where it is available and how to get it uh, and our library doesn't have all of them we do not have the requisite fund you uh, know support we will not be able to get the 
books and journals and other resources what are really been needed by our own you know the user community like academics and also the students our funds are very limited particularly in the government you know degree colleges or junior colleges and many other even in the universities also we don't have adequate funding to get our own resources that's the biggest problem the challenge is there that so now another important thing professor lakshman rao also really mentioned that uh, year after year there's uh, at least the foreign journals that are really been going to be very useful to us uh, they have been the 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 vendors or the publishers of those journals uh, they are increasing about almost uh, i think 10% or 8% of the journal prices are being increased year after year but our budgets are not really increasing in the same proportion so that what really happening is we are cutting short of our procuring or subscribing our own resources this is one point of it like another important aspect is that even the books not necessarily journals most of the books and journals or other kinds of documents are being published by the commercial publishers i mean as a commercial With, with a kind of you know emphasis on that uh, they are meant for making profits only out of the business called the publishing publishing is their business and they really want to make profits out of it they have, that's a business for them so we are looking from a different perspective our is an institution what we really call it's a service oriented institution educational institutions and libraries we are these are the service institutions like that is a profit institution so publishers are really uh, the money minded they always want to really make money from us like but what really happening is the one important aspect is that uh, the research is done by the researchers the scientific community the academic community the academic research is of course supposed to be the, the 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 biggest strength in the in 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 the research like so the the large number of researchers are only in the academic environment not only in the higher education institutions like of course scientific community comes next like so the scientists and the academics the academic research now they are the researchers they strive for a lot they do lot many kind of you know in investigations research maybe experimental or otherwise also not not necessarily always experimental but they really strive for that and they really come out with some kind of innovations like innovative wide innovative findings etc they will be really published for proper communication of those results to the people those who are interested in the society so that is what really happening so what really happening you no know, the researchers it's a sweat and toil and energies and time everything is spent by the researcher the scientist and the scientist found out research results are really communicated through a commercial publisher through a commercial journal means journals are supposed to be the most important means of scholarly communication so it is being communicated it is being really again diffused or disseminated to the other scholarly people through the journals the journals are largely owned by the commercial people the actual the content is the king but the content is really been produced by the researchers and scholars here another important point what i really wanted to um, bring to your kind notice is that large majority of the research being conducted in this particular country or elsewhere also is from the public funded money only the money comes from the government the government funded resources are used for conduct of the research like so research is carried out largely by the public funded money and public funded money is really been used for researches the research is done by the scientific community ultimately the research results are really been again published by the private proprietary commercial journal publishers like again it is our content uh, he is really making money but you know probably you may really only get a credit that uh, your name may be really appearing you as a scientist as a scholar or a teacher your name may be there that's the only thing if at all you really want but the whole rights of publishing republishing reproducing making many many copies and then reselling and making profits are only being done by the publishers so this here lies the basic question like when the public funded research is really uh, research used for research by the scientific community when it is being published to publisher it is not correct the public funded research must be made 
mandatory to be published it to be really made available in the public domain for the free access for all the people this is the kind of mandate is being really given by large many countries in the world now so public funded research results must be published or made available in the open public domain for free and open access this is the kind of principle like that's how what really happening is now this is a big principle the principle really want to say that equity of access to the information equal access to all the people like information like so now what normally happens in the in the past like some of those you know the the, the institutions which have got a big funding support like big budgets they were only really subscribing and getting those journals now this kind of open access movement if the mandate like you know when the government makes mandatory that you know public funded research results must be published in open domain public domain that can be freely accessed by anybody who ever really, really in need of it if that is really going to really prevail that has been the basic and that's what exactly we really want to say is if this kind of you know the the moment is now picking up largely now when i say largely it is not less than 35% to 40% of the scholarly literature in the present times in all the disciplines science technology social science humanities etc whatever you really call at least 35 to 40% of the you know the, the the scholarly literature the scholarly publications are now available in public domain freely that's what exactly we really want to say open access movement like so the open access movement is strengthening the libraries is strengthening all the academics is strengthening the researchers all the information seekers for them we are able to really get freely some information for everybody what exactly you really require is that you should be able to have a computer and a internet connectivity and a curiosity to find out information from that probably you will be able to like get a lot of information like so i think i i will be really mentioning you but now there are i think one example i just want to give to you now ndli i think that is national digital library of india ndli it has got a 7 crores and 20 lakhs of resources are with it 7 so crores we are not able to see any uh, slide movement no, sir no, no, i am just you know, giving introduction to my okay, own okay okay it's okay. okay i think it can be you know the the the, the background to the open education resource i am trying to give you like so i will go on to the oer until later okay so now what really happening is the ndla which has got uh, 7 crores and 20 lakhs of uh, you know resources with it uh, of which uh, they said 72% of the resources 72% of the resources are available in free public domain in open access like so the access is open to all the people that's what exactly we say open access when i say open access means it is you know it doesn't have any kind of hindrances any kind of you know the obstacles in between in order to really catch up with the in order to access information like whether it is a financial restrictions whether the legal restrictions whether it is a geographical or jurisdictional restrictions i think all those restrictions doesn't really be there with that they are freely available to anybody so that people can really access that information without any kind of you know the hurdles or limitations or constraints like so this movement is really taking place in this particular movement uh, what we are really pleading all the scientific community and academic community that whatever the research we really conduct uh, whatever the research results we really want to publish in some journals or some other place uh, we have to really think with a noble idea that our research results our research papers must be published in open access journals instead of again handing them over to the commercial publishers who are bent on making money but not at all on the service of providing information to society like so with this premise now what really happening is lot of information into the world is now coming in the open access domain that means free domain for free access for all the people without any payment without any legal restrictions professor lakshman raw mentioned that we have a copyright you know the limitations the we have the Uh, copyright constraints are there in getting copies of the documents like so that kind of constraints uh, will not be there with your open access uh, documents like so open access documents strength is picking up uh, 
mano maybe from 2000 onwards 2002 onwards lot of information is really coming up lot many number of scientific community and researchers are also really publishing the information in open uh, in access resources because open access resources are also they are the quality you know publications they are also the peer reviewed scholarly publications so okay? therefore everybody is really bent on uh, putting information into that publishing in the open access uh, domain and also trying to be we are all also since the information is freely available to us on the internet uh, i think our access is easy for us we can also access and make use of it for our own academic and research pursuits like so this is what exactly open educational resources are part of open access resources so open access resources are really been plentifully coming up now let's go on to the, the the our own topic that is given to me but i i don't know i, I think i can go ahead for uh, 20 30 minutes uh, friends i think the madam I, you can just tell me i just uh, because this is a background i have you went to the open uh, uh, access resources now what is open educational resources we are all the academics we are in the education field we are associated with the teaching and then of course teaching learning and at the same time uh, what you say the research etc the open educational resources what you really call they are the teaching learning and research materials they are meant for teaching they are meant for learning they are meant for research these are the documents these are the resources these are the information resources that are meant for that are useful for teaching learning and research which are there in the public domain then of course they have been you know published in the public domain or released into the public domain taking the license from the intellectual property that is you know, intellectual property or copyright license are there with that that you know that permit all the information seekers for free use and repurposing those resources uh, by anybody like you can really convert your own particular document what you have really accessed and then borrowed or made use of from the open access uh, document open educational resource document that can be really converted into a better document or you can really modify it and you can really change it uh, if you be with your own existing knowledge or some other things what are really been there if you really want you can convert it into a new document okay that's what exactly you can repurpose for your own for for, for your own requirement like so this is what when we really say open educational resources are those resources which are useful for teaching learning and research and they are available in a free public domain they have really got the copyright licenses for anybody to really access it this is what precisely when we really say open education to, to today when i am really going to talk something about say maybe from elementary school or maybe the ug student or for the pg student whatever it may be now when i am really going to talk some particular topic okay now you know, on that particular topic you are really going to get the you know well prepared expert talks well prepared expert you know text messages expert video and audio talks and uh, all those things are there in your kind of open education resources you just take them the ppts are also there powerpoint presentations on the particular topic also will be there you take them and then you can really with your own existing requirements and with your existing knowledge you can really uh, retransform it convert it into your own in a better kind of document much better document than that if you really uh, competent enough to really change it you change it and then make a better presentation to your own students and scholars that really going to take place like so this is when i really say open education resources are those resources which are useful for our academics like teaching learning and research they are freely available and uh, you can really do you know you can copy you can you can download you can print you can save you can uh, uh, send it to somebody else transfer to somebody else whenever they need when you can really you know reform rechange it into another kind of in a better document with your own knowledge and all those things can be done and you know you can use it in your own teaching learning activities like now what they constitute what are they actually when we say open educational resources what are they it could be the full courses when i say full course course is a paper normally that's a kind of a, 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 okay now then of course you know course material okay then of course different modules in the courses textbooks on the particular subject okay streaming of videos also audio material also tests software that are really going to be there and any other tools and materials and techniques they are going to be used to support in accessing the knowledge 
so maybe it can be software maybe it could be text maybe it is images maybe videos maybe audio talks and i think maybe your experiments maybe your lab you know works etc lab sheets or you know you know case works etc anything that is really going to be useful for teaching learning and research i think this there are all those things can be part of your open educational resources of course the very important you know the underlining um, you know part of it is that these resources are offered freely for the educators i mean to say the teachers like you and me maybe your assistant professors or professors or lecturers or teachers what it may be learners like our own students community and followed by that the self learners i am a fellow i am interested in self i because i now there is no way that i am really going to really pursue any big program i can be a self learner i just want to learn something you know out of my own things like okay so there are quite a good number of people they really want to be a lifelong learner so i just want to learn learn and learn and enrich my own knowledge and my own competencies and my own skills etc i want to improve it because knowledge is i think uh, It's a, it's a very vast. I think when you really wanted to acquire a little more things on all those things, any time that they saw your age and your own retirement or some of the things will not develop come into your place. So people, so for self learning also, educators, learners, self learners can they can use or reuse those resources for teaching, learning, and research and all those things. These are all OERs. I think uh, the OER is for teaching, learning, and research. That's what you really come to know. It's available in the public domain freely, and it is really having the intellectual property license are there, so that you know you can access it. Anybody can access it. Anybody can use it. So here lies one important aspect we have to always understand: open access resources, open education resources are freely available for anybody to download, access, make use, and all those things. This is clear. but now what is very important on this is even though when i say that there are no copyright limitations restrictions are there on that the first most important thing is when we borrow and make use of any resource maybe it is open access resource maybe it is a proprietary resource whatever it may be any resource any information from any source whenever we really use it we are bound by our own ethics the ethics is that we have to acknowledge the resource or information that we have really taken or borrowed from some source this particular piece of information this theory this data this message this idea i have really borrowed i have taken from so on so so on so x authors work i think that's what exactly we are going to acknowledge so we have to acknowledge acknowledging the source where from you have taken is only the requirement on you but you know you have you are free to really access it access use reuse remix redistribute and anything can be really done that's what oers like they include these kind of things like textbooks all those things that's what i just now i tell you now how it's really going to be helpful to our own academics how our people will be so we am talking about oer and open access so how they are really going to be helpful to us now they are really going to give educators the ability to adopt instructional resources instructional resources this is the kind of you know the aids and tools what we are trying to really you know use in uh, delivering our own content when we really delivering our own lectures our own talks our own presentations so in all those things uh, you can adopt this can really the educators the teachers like you and me we can really this educators the, the ability to adopt instructional resources to the individual needs of their own students uh, depending on the requirement of my own student community student levels etc etc i can really use it and to ensure that uh, these resources are up to date you now because you are getting the data the up to date information etc you are trying to do it and also to ensure that the cost is not going to be a barrier it's not a constraint to you in accessing high quality standards aligned resources the resources which are really been integrated with the standards standard material to get even the standard material the costs are not going to be a criteria for you cost factor the price factor doesn't really come in your way in getting the resources like this is what really happens the educators can really improve their own you know the content delivery methods and mode and then instructional material and their you know all the course material or other kinds of things can be really improved using these you know open educational resources now they are plenty available they are available in plenty okay now this is what i really open education resources was first adopted by the unesco you all know unesco i don't want really going to be here now it is unesco forum on the impact of open courseware for higher education in developing countries in 2002 they have really 
used the phrase open educational resources was first time coined by the unesco and that is really been accepted by that like friends this you can really see are you able to see my screen friends can anybody anybody can really react to me respond to me yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, thank sir. you thank you thank you thank thanks a lot thank you Mr. so here is what i really put a, a small you know picture you know this is open educational there's a book here i think there are multiple you know the hands i think we are all sharing it and we are using it this is a logo this is a logo for open educational resources okay now this is a zonax melo of unesco has produced this oer logo okay it's a way of creating common identity for the global open educational resource community of practitioners projects and researchers this is a kind of you know this this, this is sort like and uh, this is the paris declaration was really been made in 2012 and uh, making the all the you know the governments uh, to come forward to contribute to the open educational resources for development of society you know because you know the development uh, one of the important development tools is going to be the education that has been uh, very long back uh, acknowledged and observed by many people like so we really now what this 2012 paris declaration want to really say that you know now it it want to encourage all the governments to contribute to create awareness on the availability of the open educational resources for those academics and other students and scholars and faculty members who really need to have it and to also make them to use these open education resources because they are the quality documents who are really prepared by the expert team and if you are really been um, still competent enough you can also really modify and convert it and then change it and do a better document and then use in your education teaching learning activities etc like this is what uh, is going on like okay now the as i said open access movement open educational resource movement also really took up right from 2001 now this is the hewlett and andrew mellon foundation they have jointly funded the mit open courseware mit is massachusetts institute of technology mit mit and stanford and then i think these are some of the very you know the forerunners they are the premier institutions uh, to come out with uh, the open educational resources in the world from their own institutions therefore we are really taking so from that onwards these are the first institution which one is when i really want to say mit mit massachusetts institute of technology is the first institution is a forerunner is a premier institution that has really come out with uh, making all its course material freely available to the academics uh, throughout the globe not restricted to us not restricted to their own state or something like that so anybody and everybody can really this is a kind of mit is one of the you know the top most universities in the world which has got a high ranking maybe in the you know it i think mit and stanford and oxford i think they must be certainly in less than maybe the top five universities in the in the world like so they have there all the course material they kept for the open domain in a free access and that's how the oer movement has really started since then several other institutions have also followed the queue along with the mit and something like as i told stanford university stanford university and mit they have really also have a combined you know the activity and program and they are really bringing out so much of material and the material is abundantly available now okay so like that uh, now open educational resources they include learning uh, content something like courses course material content modules learning objects also collections uh, journals uh, and the tools like software and then of course uh, other things like you know then implementation resources intellectual property licenses this is a very important aspect when a, in a, in a resource is being shared liberally i think you need to have the kind of license to share that's what exactly the copyright problems will really crop up in between that copyright issues are also the publishing material design principles and localized content and many more things are there i think there can be major audio video sounds music textbooks articles etc etc are there now oe has got a oers open educational resources they have got at least four most important you know the principle hidden principles are there for oer the, though we call them as four r's four r's it can be reusable you can use it 
once again a number of times it can be you can redistributable i think you can distribute it to anybody people my my other colleagues my friends the people those who are working in my own domain area my own area of research and all the activity etc like you can revise it and you can remix that particular you know open education resource document with other resources and then you can really convert and make it into a kind of a, a, a new document like so remixing combining your this oer with other uh, resources and then creating a new document you can revise suppose something you know but document is slightly you know um, uh, obsolete or outdated probably you can really add up to date up, make it up to date isn't it and of course you can redistribute i think you can do, not only you make use of it you can also you are free to really send to your any of your own uh, people those who are really interested and you can use any number of times use and reuse is re these are all the four important in you know, the principles sir they are very close to the concept called democratization of knowledge the knowledge is equally available to us information for all that's what exactly the ifla and unesco international federation of library associations and also unesco have been really suggesting that let the information must be available to all the people in the world without any kind of you know restrictions there should not be any kind of hindrances there should not be any kind of you know the problems in information access let the let, let the scientific or the other kinds of research you know the findings that are really there at that scientific output the scientific research results they must be freely available across the globe across the countries without any kind of restrictions like that's what exactly we really call it as information for all that is what you no know, free flow of information across the globe this is a kind of quote free flow of information across the globe across the globe or countries all the countries should have the the research findings that are really been there only with one particular advanced country should not really rest and uh, lie there only it has to really percolate it has to really come down it should also be really made available to other countries so that the other countries also will really grow develop so that's what exactly the, the concept of that like so these are some of the important institutions sir top most institutions like mit mit open courseware and then of course uh, oh, sorry I, i will go back one second one hour one hour minute but only the problem is that uh, um, the, the, the time these are all the mit yale university open michigan university hopkins bloomberg university harvard university carnegie mellon university tufts university of massachusetts okay then of course notre dame the okay, university uh, california university of california berkeley so like that i think these are all some of the top most you know the institutions so they have been really producing lot of uh, you know what we really call uh, open access resources now we call mit open courseware is a free and open collection of material from thousands of mit courses i think about 200 of to 3000 uh, courses material is freely available i think mit material is of high highly rated is it because i told you in the entire world over countries it is in the top one of some of one of the, in the first top five universities like isn't it maybe first second third something like that so like that it, it varies every year so this is a uh, thousands of courses material is free for everybody to now what they really want is we have a, the mit what the principal they really want to say in, in their own uh, kind of you know Uh, website uh, what they really want to say is we have a responsibility for the development of the entire world as uh, a human kind as a part of that uh, we owing that particular responsibility we are you know freely making our own course material course content and all those things liberally and freely for anybody in the world to access it it's a noble idea it's a very very noble concept like so this is what you know this is for the lifelong learning or i think to teach others so mit does not offer what one important aspect as per mit is it doesn't offer any credit or certificate it don't give any certificate to you there are something like swayam is there in our country they, they offer some kind of credits and course etc you can really get credit and that can be really added to your own uh, memo of marks in your ug or pg etc like but here this will give you the only kind of course content course material and other things uh, but it will not really award you any certificate or won't give you any credits uh, and it will not ask anything in return it will give you only information material resources but don't ask any don't ask anything no enrollment registration aapko registration karne ka zarurat hi nahi hai there is no need for registration even there are some quite a good number of you know the open education resource uh, you know the they are there the, the, the institutions are of them they really ask you invariably that you have to really register at least use your email and name and give your details and register and use it but many people really ask but mit says don't need to register you use it liberally so liberal like so like that now there is no sign up and no start or no end dates 
you can take the material any day any day any time any time you can use it for 3 months 4 months 1 year no we are not going to have any restrict unrestricted access to information if it is a kind of one one course you are doing you have to really do it maybe in 3 months or 2 months etc you have that kind of requirements are there but here because it is not awarding any any credits or any kind of certificate i think it has given everything liberalized like mit open course where is a web based publication virtually all the MIT course contents are available there. It's a great idea. It's really going this one side up there. And uh, they really want to say, now the educators uh, are using 9% the teachers like students, I think 42%. Uh, then others are also using self-learners, maybe 43%, etc. Now this kind of the strength people are using. By the way, that's not to, uh, happen. Who are the people that are using this uh, uh, OERs is a kind of uh, that graph it shows and in the world over countries world over countries it's not not exactly only uh, one country or two countries i think that's what uh, happening um i think uh, this is one very important aspect therefore i really want to say that now i will not really go into there are 300 million visitors for this 300 millions isn't it that means, uh, see, you can really imagine the, the, the strength of these particular open educational resources. These are all different courses are there in that. I just wanted to just, you know. Then, of course, the another important aspect is, now, these um, uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Stanford, Togetherly, they really developed an open courseware platform and they have been really offering quite, especially the engineering, uh, you know, the you know, content is really computer science, all those things are very, very high. They are really going on here. And then um, now there is a slight difference is there uh, because, you know, this um, what you really say is Stanford, it offers uh, the uh, certificates, you know, so it, it gives you awards with the credits like that. So that kind of variations are there. I'm not really going to do it. Similarly, Open Michigan is one of the kind of Michigan you know, University, I think they have got. Then Open Courseware of the Tufts University, another thing. And uh, there are also other uh, kinds of things are there called Open Culture. Now, there are, it's a world's top universities. I think about 1,700 free courses are available from 200 uh, certificate programs are really being now on courses like this is what uh, you know, the learning has got a kind of director of open education resources are there. 6,000 resources in open schooling, pre post secondary, higher secondary, higher education, technical and vocational skills. I think they have been there in that. And uh, this is Coursera is one of the important uh, another you know platform from where 200 leading universities uh, open educational resources are available from here. The very big, large uh, range of, you know, the kind of uh, learning situations are there. And uh, this is uh, working well. And in the 82 million learners plus 100 plus Fortune 500 companies are really making use of this. So this is what exactly the open educational resources. Now, then I will really, uh, this wiki, 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 wiki dictionary is, I think, uh, nothing but Wikipedia and, and then dictionary both combined together. It's a free online dictionary of multiple languages. The challenge of open educational resource, what we can really see is uh, the resources, uh, we need resources largely for the faculty to deliver the content to our own students. Uh, that's what we really come up. Now, we need to really train our own faculty and also the learners to learn about, to know about the resources that is creating awareness. And at the same time, how to tap, how to really access and re retrieve what we really want from these that's important aspect then some technical support or assistance is also really been support given it in the initial days to all of our own student community and some software also you know the toolkits required hardware required and then of course we need to really try to enlighten and educate our own community our own uh, academics on copyright issues and intellectual property right issues etc then of course the quality of the document naturally need to be made made it should be made sure of that now what with the document is really produced etc then delivery mechanism how you are really going to deliver it through the web portals or websites of the institutions or maybe a kind of other way you have really created a database of all the resources and that can be really delivered to people made accessible etc i think this is what uh, is to be really there one very important aspect is that uh, we have creative commons is the kind of licensing agency which is really taking care of now the licenses uh, that can be really given to the users of the open educational resources like i told you there are four r's are there reuse remix redistribute and then something like that there are some four are there okay so remix redistribute reuse and then uh, like that there are yeah or oh, revise you are right revise okay now in that context 
So that is one quality. But you know, there are Creative Commons is one non-profit uh, body which is really giving licenses uh, to the open educational resources of the authors, of the teachers, of the academics, whoever have really developed a kind of open educational material. Okay, for you have really developed open education institution, this creative commons will really take your consent before it is kept in the public domain free access. What kind of licenses can be given? 100% free. That means you can even copy and sell it also. That is a commercial purpose. Only you can really copy it one purpose like you can really copy and you can remix and create a new document so some for some people they say okay some people really say that you know my particular document need not be really revised by others my particular document need not be really you know mixed with other documents and uh, the whole essence what i really wrote should not be really that so we have some kind of restrictions are also there you now these restrictions can be really you know agreed upon or decided by the creative commons and that, that attributions will be given to the document like okay so this is the uh, one important aspect fosc is a free and open source software like okay so cc commons is a non-profit organization and it is a it is a enables sharing and use of creative oh. knowledge so oh, yes please yes so what i really would like to say because you know this khan academy is one of the of course agencies uh, that is salman khan and he is from a bangladeshi and he has also kept quite a lot of information on this khan academy like udemy you have got these days isn't it so this is for up to k14 i think most students this person salman khan is this person okay now then alison uh, course material is also something is available and i think uh, it's advanced learning interactive systems online alison full form is that advanced learning interactive systems on it's a e-learning uh, provider fund okay and then it's 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 a for a, a lot of information uh, there are 23 million users on this i think in several languages including hindi language also urdu language french portuguese documents are also there now there uh, you know the, the the core objective they reflect in their own slogan that a new world of free certified learning okay so they give certifications uh, free online learning that's what you know Alison has 4,000 free online courses. This is what, you know, it's a non, it's a kind of organizations learns it. I don't want to really talk about too many about uh, all this university and there are also, and um, this I will ignore. Coming back to India for two, three minutes, I will just tell you and then uh, close it like. Uh, now we have Sarvasiksha Abhiyan has got some kind of, you know, the course material required for the schools. Swayam Prabha is exactly the kind of 34 uh, DTH education channels are available for, you know, transmitting your own, you know, the expert uh, video, you know, uh, you know, the lessons, etc. And uh, IIT online classes and NPTEL course, etc. So national project on technology enabled learning is for the engineering program, etc. Like, you know, the, you know, the Vimukti, Sakshat, NPTEL, EPG, Patashala is very, very important for our academics, for our teachers and students. I think there are more than 70 subjects, the, you know, the syllabus related chapter wise, the contents are there. Expert talks are there. In this we have to really use it. EPG Patashala. E Gyan Kosh is nothing but Indira Gandhi National Open Institute course material is available for all people to access it online freely. But you have to register there by using your own email ID. That's all. Nothing beyond. Nobody will charge you anything. You can really comfortably. You know, to a large extent, my impression also is that you no know, Indira Gandhi National Open Institute course material is well written by experts. Now you can always download. You can make use of. But it's a kind of course related, syllabus related material only. When you are delivering your own talk, there is nothing wrong. You can always try to depend on the Ignan Kosh for getting your own material. Maybe you are doing MSc Chemistry or MSc Mathematics or Library Science or Journalism or Public Relations. I think you can get the material. No problem. No, no question. Like. So whatever the programs are there, you can always get it. So NCRT, all the material also freely available to you. Ekalavya is also in the field of engineering, etc. So then one very important aspect, what I really have, because you know, I don't have time. Otherwise, I will really take you to this particular portal. One India, digital platform one india one digital platform is there here you can find lot many kind of open education resources are there in that another followed by that the ndli that's what i was just making a mention about that india is one of the important sources so this is what one india one digital platform i think all these you know the resources are available in this particular you know um, the portal what you call it as um, 
this is what one india one digital platform i think it's very very integrated uh, class 1 to pg level e content portal talk about any level class 1 onwards to pg level i think the material is available to you here so audio video content metadata for some particular documents now you have got a metadata from there you can have a, a linkages connectivity so that you will really go on to the original source uh, you know that kind of uh, server web server and from there you really get the material or the data like okay for some you have metadata metadata means what exactly it means is that the, the details are only will be available bibliographic details document details will will be there with you if you can click there it will really take you to the actual original source uh, where the kind of the actual you know the information full information available that will be really shown to you that will be brought back to you and shown to you like okay so it has got uh, i think uh, uh, 4 lakh 39310 resources are there and 2 lakh 89000 electron textbooks are there then of course there are video 61000 are there 41000 for the ug 36000 for the pg etc like that so school education that's what sarva shiksha abhiyan i think lot of material is there now this national mission of education through ict nme ict sakshat and e content for pg courses this is one thing uh, brihaspati is also the kind of uh, platform to provide uh, affordable you know the web site design all those things for the computer science people that brihaspati Uh, vimukti is also online webcasting software e learning solutions so there are many things are there nptel epg patashala okay this is epg patashala e gyan course that's how i told you uh, indira gandhi national open university and uh, ekalavya is also another important uh, you know, source and swayam prabha i just know i told you that you know it is a 34 uh, educational channels uh, streaming all the lessons etc video i think these things are available uh, from there nptel and uh, igno material and many other things okay number of channels this swayam prabha only and uh, then of course there are other things open stacks is a kind of uh, rice university has got uh, this this information open stacks uh, but material open material high quality peer reviewed openly licensed college textbooks are available with <clears throat> open stacks stacks yes uh, i think textbooks are available free textbooks are available i have also taken uh, some material from uh, one of my friend uh, chandrashekar's uh, actual work he has really given some content that i have really put it here i because without going much into the much much into the details because it may be uh, troubling you because if i can really take more time on that it's it is necessarily taxing you all uh, making you to stay back for some time so this is what exactly i really want to say that we have abundance of information is there we have abundance of uh, digital information resources are there they are freely available to you they are useful for teaching learning and completing some courses and programs both the teachers and students and scholars can really make use of it well, i told you the one india one one one, one uh, digital uh, platform i think that uh, digital program that is one of the important things etc you go and then you can really search for information on any of these maybe swayam or epg patashala e gyan course this that all those things. get material or mit courseware or whatever it may be material is available to us only that the curiosity to find where it lies the curiosity to improve our own in teaching learning activities and to really deliver our own content in a much 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 you know attractive way to our own students maybe by ppts or maybe kind of some kind of mixing with your visuals with photographs maybe with sometimes you know the sounds animation pictures that, that i think you can really make your classroom very very attractive very impressive information available the only thing is the inquisitiveness to really try to catch hold of that and to make use of in our own you know teaching learning activities that's really been the kind of gap we have to always try to look into it the information managers are what you really call the librarians sir will always be there with you i think you can always explore to them and and uh, you do them this kind of tasks i want this you get it to me i think you i'll try to really make them to really uh, you know go here and there and collect the information and give before you if you if, if you are really coming forward and then putting some kind of you know the, your requirements are really put forth to your librarian i think they are there they stand by you and they'll really come to your rescue and thereby our own teaching learning activities will really be more strengthened and we will really be able to the first statement what made by professor lakshman rao we need to really do a quality research quality academic uh, you know content preparation quality academic content delivery and our programs must be you know well standard programs quality programs so that uh, our you know the student community and others will really benefit from that so this is what my precise submission 
I think we can really discuss a lot. A lot many things are there. Thank you very much. You have been so nice that you know you could really listen to me uh, for all this uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes. Probably I really discussed all these things with you. Thank you very much. If anybody has got any kind of you know queries on that, you are welcome. I think I will be able to. I may try to answer you, please. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable information you have given. Uh, if anybody has any questions, please use your chat box so that uh, we can convey the same to the resource persons. Oh my goodness, I'm unable to come there to your site. Okay. So there is not much uh, thing coming up. Okay. Uh, from the audience side, uh, are there are there any questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please, yeah. Please, 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 please go ahead. Yeah, yeah because nowadays the UDC came up with the new rules and regulations and the new education policy also. And recently we got that a student can pursue two degrees at the same time. And I think this is going to impact on not only the students, teachers, but it's also been library professionals and how we can overcome that, how we can provide information if student may come with such a degrees. Special sir, will you be able to answer his question? What is the question? We are unable to understand. We are not able to hear, madam. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Last one, sir. Yeah, yeah. Could you be in, a little uh, I mean, voice? Could a little you louder? Raise? We want, yeah. We want a little loud. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Last one of Yes, tell me. Or, please. or just uh, type it off in your chat box so that we can respond. Okay, okay. Sir, uh, as the new education policy and uh, UGC came up with new regulations that a student can pursue two degrees at the same time. Uh, yes. And, uh, and it is going to impact on not only the students and teachers as well as the library professionals that how we can overcome. So this is also a big challenge to library professionals also. Students may want to do the same degree at the same time. How we can provide the information? To them. So actually, there are two, three issues which which you have to understand in NEP. One of them is uh, you can have subjects. For example, there is no teacher in the chemistry. For example, it's an arts college. If somebody wants to choose, they can choose the chemistry, right? And if they if, if it's a science college, they can choose the arts humanities or social science. This is the option they are giving. So how we are going to offer this uh, from the colleges is a major issue because we don't have teachers we don't have department maybe now they are allowing the educational consultants right uh, those who are uh, able to provide online education uh, the colleges can consult them and then they can uh, give online education for a paper i think this is not going to come regarding the two programs they are saying two programs i don't know one side they are they are just recently they have uh, an explanation has come but basically, all these things are at, at right now in theory, theory. But when it comes to practical, we have to see a lot of things. For example, there's a first year is diploma, certificate, second year is diploma, third year is degree, fourth year is... But they are saying a lot of things. But is it possible? For example, you, you take an example of a journalism, you take an example of BA, you take an example of MBA. Uh, if you do first, first year, uh, you know, the, the subjects, you know, you have to identify uh, with a bachelor degree. Uh, after two years or after three years or a diploma, what you will do unless you uh, do uh, com uh, comprehensively, the syllabus has to be designed, the syllabus has to be changed. A lot of things are there. I, I think it, theoretical, they are very good, but practically we have to see how we are going to we'll be able to do it. As far as the library is concerned, you, you don't worry about it because it is maybe five subjects or 50 subjects you are going to serve the uh, students and the teachers. That's it. That's not a library. library it's not a problem. You, but only thing you know, you need to have more fun so that you will be able to get more documents and you can supply.
if you want if you want i can send yeah, you. if you want i can send a document to madam how the two yes. uh, degrees can be managed i will send one document i will, yes, I will send it to madam if you send me i can sh i will share it through whatsapp sir because we have a whatsapp group created for this uh, webinar so i'll be able to share it so sure, somebody sure. also wanted uh, the ppt to be shared and if possible you please send that also sir so that uh, we can share you know, and I'm sorry, there was some problem with my system. I couldn't really adjust that. Any queries also, now I, I, through the mobile, I will be able to answer. If anybody has some questions, I could not listen to you. Okay. I was away from the you know, webinar. I got disconnected. Okay, sir. Okay. No any, any questions are there, probably one or two questions, probably. If anybody has got anything to check with you. So maybe we felt that uh, the technicalities of OERs, using OERs, how to use them and uh, how to, re uh, you were talking about reusing, redistributing, revising, remixing. Uh, one uh, practical example or some sort of workshop like kind of thing we needed uh, because uh, there are so many copyright issues, there is some intellectual uh, property thing coming up. Uh, so uh, we though we have the access to all these, uh, the, the, this is causing a little bit of constraint with the uh, teachers and students. Uh, so maybe uh, how how to access them and how to reuse and everything. That I think we need one more webinar for that. And uh, uh, definitely, I, I also spoke to Lakshman Rao sir about the intellectual property right thing. Uh, maybe in the uh, in a course of time we will have uh, that webinar also. Uh, so Sudarshan sir, can you uh, uh, please tell us uh, how digitalization of library can help the uh, new librarians and why is uh, why is digitalization really essential? Madam, your, your question is uh, different, madam. Digitalization is different. You, sh it is, you should ask a question as an automation. Digitalization okay. is, yeah, it should be automation. Yeah, yeah, automation. Okay, maybe yeah, I, I use the wrong word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And second thing is, I have sent one uh, thing to you also where UGC is conducting continuously lectures for the benefit of the teachers. I sent a uh, message to you also. Okay, sir. Uh, did you put it on my WhatsApp, sir, so that I can share it? So, yes, please. So, uh, yes. I, I think, um, uh, just, you know, a minute only, I won't take yeah. WhatsApp because... Uh, um, uh, our members uh, may not be having that much of time. Yeah, we are also to... running short of time, and I need to thank everyone. Just one minute, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, automation is just a just thing, but uh, our activities will be mechanized like. Okay, why by automation means what we are really going to do is uh, we are only uh, uh, trying to input into the computer only the metadata of the documents. When I say metadata means uh, the bibliographic details, so which author, which title, which edition, which publication, which journal, which content, etc. And how to search and retrieve. So this is only as far as your you know, automation is going to really help us. Now, how, how to really preserve information and then uh, mechanically uh, using your own computer, uh, you will be able to really search and find what is available there. And then, of course, you will really go and uh, take it uh, manually and then make choose like. So then, of course, uh, another important aspect is that, you know, um, uh, finding all the resources on a particular theme or a topic is also very, very convenient for you when you really go for automation. So automation also really information, you know, it's a kind of what you can really say. Automation will help you in inventory control, like, you know, what is available and what is not available in the library can be easily known to you. And how to really, where it lies and then how to really retrieve it and get it back also is really convenient for you. When you go for digitization, what really happens is how to deliver and transfer the information to others is going to really take place. Whether you are digitization or digitalization of the resources. So, of course, the underlining concept is that you can digitize and digitalize your own material, but not others' material. If it is under the copyright, you know, the purview is there. I think if the copyright period is there, maybe 60 or 70 years from the date of publication or from the date of the death of the author, something there are some kind of restrictions are there. So when it is not in the copyright, you know, the kind of restrictions or the domain, then you can always digitize. You know, others' document I cannot digitize. My own document I can digitize. Okay, if others' document also, if once the copyright period expires, then I can really digitize. Otherwise, I cannot digitize. It's a kind of crime like. So, like that, 
digitization means to have the digital resources with you is easy to really communicate easy to transfer easy to also access easy to find out all these things will really take place when you really go for digitalization or digitization of the resources like now therefore what will happening is digitization is really going on uh, very much and all the digital resources are coming up especially the multimedia uh, you know the content uh, you know mixed up with the content is coming up so that you know it has got bigger value than only the text it's a 2d and maybe you can they can have some photographs in between or maybe some charts but you know all the multiple media can be integrated in the same platform uh, seamlessly and you can really have the effect of all of them maybe the visuals uh, maybe the paintings maybe the motion that is the animation isn't it all of them can be really there maybe the simulation too, maybe all those things can be there that's how it can be a kind of good uh, you know tutoring or a good training material also so that's how you know this is a bigger area when you can really go for that uh, digitalization or digitalization of the resources will really help us a lot okay. uh, so we are all running short of time sir only one minute we have so before ending the session uh, let me thank lakshman rao sir sudarshan sir and all the participants our students have attended from the virtual board sir so we have yeah. only put the lecturers on the group because there will be many much of the uh, disturbances and all and so i thought they should attend from virtual board and only the lecturers will attend uh, this way so please don't think the number count was less it was around 200 uh, and uh, we are very very much thankful to sudarshan sir for talking more about oers yes they are the real need of the art to know more about research and you can use so many sources sir has explained to us so i want all the lecturers to collaborate with each other to help us know new things and if we share and if we remix and redistribute the knowledge we have it will spread and uh, let the uh, the logo of knowledge survive and uh, maybe uh, the many such collaboration things will come out from your side so thanking you both from uh, government degree college mohabbat sir uh, yeah we are uh, finally running short so uh, let me once again thank each and every one who have uh, made this session possible so i thank all my lecturers who have given their wonderful uh, cooperation in arranging this uh, session so thank you one and all uh, yuvendra sir uh, malesham sir uh, and everyone uh, sashikant sir and uh, venu sir and everyone uh, so thank you one and all The webinar will end here.